Eo Triceratops, one of the biggest fat asses of Path of Titans. And the creature where you rarely get the fights you ask for. But what should you do in a fight? Can you plow through your enemies like you plow through those bushes? Let me teach you how to plow properly as an eel triceratops. The battles we most likely will find ourselves in will of course be on land. If you are taking it to the ocean then you are just proven every paleontologist that the trike was semi-aquatic. And I can confirm, they are not meant for aerial battles. Keep the trike to the ground, kids. As for what subspecies of trike we should grow, uh, we do have uh, balance, uh, defense, and speed. You know, the normal stuff. But in my case, I would go for defense. I'm not saying that speed aren't too bad or uh, that balance are too bad either, but if you really think about it, everything in the game are going to outrun you, even some of the apexes. So, why even bother with speed uh, if everything is just gonna outspeed you? So why not invest in defense? As for the arsenal, Trike is a powerhouse and we got powerful abilities. Of course we got a normal headbutt attack, a quick headbutt attack and be used while running. Of course that is one is pretty obvious and you won't be able to attack back without it. Sharpen horn, sharpen your horns on the ground, increasing damage output for 60 seconds, crucial. You can even 7 to 9 shot all the creatures with it. Of course it does drain stamina and has a massive cooldown so do be careful when using it. I'll come back to why later. Sensibility Stampede, a rather new ability that increases damage by 2.5% for each Ceratopsian in a group and can stack up to 4 times. This only activates if and when you're in a group and so if you play solo it's kinda useless. However, the extra damage does come in handy when you're in a fight, or at least are in a group at the same time. Notice that it says Ceratopsian and not Eotriceratops. That means you can group up with any creature that is a Ceratopsian and still get the effect buff. This is also an encouragement to group up with others. I mean, you don't have to, but if you do, you'll get the extra damage buff. The next ability, Stomp ability, which is a front limb attack, a heavy stomp with front feet, must be standing still to use. Incredible useful ability, especially if you have any annoying ankle biters. While it may not always hit its mark, it will definitely do when the area of effect will be added to the game. Skipping metabolism, we have Hide, and we have Resilient Scale, which increases bleed and venom healing by 30%. And like you just saw, it will come incredibly handy when you're playing against toxic players or just players in general. The charge ability, which basically just makes you run really fast, is not something I would uh, typically use in a battle unless it's really absolutely necessary. Let's take a look. Let's say you're in a fight and the enemy charges up an attack. Use the ability to dodge the attack. Of course, be mindful, it drains stamina like crazy, so yeah, keep that in mind. What you just saw are pretty much the only option you have for the different attacks and abilities. You really don't have that many options, but that makes it more simpler for us. The opponents you'll be facing are pretty much the, the other creatures of the game. But if I may to be as bold, I want to claim that as an adult Eo Triceratops, at least in a 1v1, you don't have much to fear, except for Duo Apexes, Argentinosaurus players, Anodontosaurus players, and or other Eotriceratops. But either from that, you don't really have much to fear. Well actually, just now forget about the duos and focus on 1v1s. For 1v1s, just be careful of the last 3 ones I mentioned. What I'm trying to say is, if you see an solo Apex Carnival player, don't be worried. Don't believe me? Let's take a look on what's been killing me the last couple of days. Duo Spinosaurus. Duo Giganotosaurus. Another Spinosaurus pair. And somehow two Parasolophus? How did I fight two Parasolophus again? Why did I fight two Parasolophus again? In previous videos I have mentioned the advantage of taking the high ground. However, in this case, 
The Eo Triceratops attacks are pretty much aimed for those above him, in front of him, or under him. Basically, a whole 180 degrees of attack in front, which means taking any angles in a fight doesn't really matter. You don't have any knockback ability, so you can't really cause any fall damage to your enemies. You'll probably need a cliff to do that, and you'll just have to try and push them off somehow. But by doing so, you also run the risk of falling off that cliff yourself. Another thing about the Eo Triceratops, and probably the biggest reason to why it's weak against duos as a solo, that's because you don't have any attacks aimed backwards, meaning your bum bum are exposed for any incoming attacks. Yeah, they took away the tail ability attack, which means your only attacks are in the front, which means you always have to make sure that your fights are head on. If not, you'll be attacked from both ends, and if you are in such a situation, then your best option for survival are simply... Run. Again, this is a fight 2 against 1. It's already unfair, you don't need to play nice. You can try to make it so that they can only attack you from one direction. What they'll most likely do in this situation are just take turns on attacking you and they'll slowly but surely drain you for HP. Since you are gonna die, might as well go out in a blaze of glory. If you do find an Apex Carnivore who has the balls to fight you, then that's just a free trophy. At least if you know what you're doing, which I will teach you right now. Like I said earlier, when you have an attack that can reach 180 degrees in front of you, then no matter what the terrain you're at, it doesn't really matter. Opening up with Sharpened Horn is a good start. The Sharpened Horn ability takes stamina, so it's good to activate it while you have it. The Carnivore player, at least the more experienced ones, know how dangerous the Sharpened Horn is, so they will most likely try and stay clear for it at least until the effect is gone. That's when you'll have to play aggressive. The sharpened horn only lasts for a minute, so you have to use it while you can. Don't be afraid to go in for the attack. And if he charges up his attack, use your speed ability to escape it. The ability uses a lot of stamp, so make sure you cancel it before it completely drains you. The enemy have a better turning radius than you, so use the precise movement button and try to anticipate where they'll end up. After they have gotten hit a few times, they'll either have to give up the hunt or give up their lives. If you compare how much health I lost in comparison to what he lost, then you'll quickly understand to why the Eo Triceratops is so feared. The solo land carnivores aren't the only easy target. I mean uh, capable warriors you'll have to face. You'll also have to face semi-aquatics. Other than the Spinosaurus, we have those who are more adapted to water. The best thing would be to find a place where you're on a ledge or where he can't uh, do a drive-by from water, land and then back to water again. Of course, if that's not possible, just take a defensive stand and make sure it's a battle, head-to-head -head battle. You will have the advantage if it's a duet because he can take less damage than you. Even if his damage output are way more than yours, you are much much tougher than he is, so... And the attacks are reaching his head. Meaning, you can actually kill him with maybe just 5 or 7 shots. And that is without the sharpened horn. Do remember, Sarkos did get a health nerf. I won't deny that I had the advantage in this situation due to me having a ledge where he can't get to me as easy, but same strategy applies to basically everywhere on the map. Of course, if you're going to fight something else than a carnivore, say the herbivores, then you're going to lose a bit in the stat advantage. The herbivores are a bit tougher than the carnivores, but even if they are tougher, that just means you gotta hit them more. And of course, use the same strategy. Remember, your head are literally built for head-to-head -head brawling. You will have the advantage if you can turn the battle into such. Of course, without the sharpened horn ability, 
the damage output from the horns are a bit lacking. In the 1v1, it does depend a lot on the other player on how much you will have to move. Of course, if he doesn't move much, then you also don't have to move much. However, if he does move, you just have to make sure to anticipate his movement. Which brings me to the next point. In this type of battle, I even find it more troublesome than fighting duo Apexes. And that is, fighting something smaller and faster than you. And more of course, because they won't fight you 1v1. Again, in such situation, it's best to take a defensive stand and also make sure that your weapons are always directed towards your enemy. Of course, when there's multiple enemies, that will be more difficult. Normally in such situation, I would use any possible means to survive. That also includes using the terrain to your advantage. I wouldn't normally recommend to chase after the enemy, not when you're so slow. But if you see that he's running towards a place where he can't escape, then it's best to just take your chances. If he does escape, then you'll have your back against the wall. That way, they can only attack you from one direction. In other words, they'll have to run straight into your horns. As long as you make sure that they'll get your horn rather than your bum, then you can outlast them. They will have no choice but to forfeit the battle. Remember, not every fight needs to end with death. Sometimes it's victory enough just to survive. Of course, that was only two aloes. If it was three, then I might have been in serious danger. It probably would have been another duo apex moment. In which case, it would just be okay to go out with a blaze of glory. Backing yourself into a corner when there's multiple adversaries is a good strategy. But that is only if necessary. If you fight something like a Pachycephalosaurus pair, then you need even less attacks to make them seriously hurt. The problem lies, when one is hurt, he goes to heal, and the other one keeps the battle going. This strategy is not seen in only Pachycephalosaurus, however it's plain as day, and when you see this strategy, there's no shame to turn your back. That strategy can and will eventually wear you down. In such situation, you can end with, either you die, or you actually being able to kill one of them by luck, or them being stupid by the way, or you just walking away. Of course if you want to fight to the death, don't start crying when you know the strategy. So to sum it up in terms everybody understands, solo, fight, duo, flight, gangs, press yourself up against the wall and receive all their attacks while also pushing back. Also, against smaller creatures, just step on them like mama taught you. Heh <sighs> heh. We need that asteroid ASAP.